When I was 10 years old, I committed a crime. I robbed a store. It was a gift shop on a school field trip. My fourth grade class took to Dutch Gardens in Louisiana. I don't remember a thing about where we went or what we did that day, but in that gift shop was this little wooden windmill about six inches tall, and I wanted it. My best friend even bought one, but I didn't have enough money, and so I looked all around, and then I stuck it in my pocket and walked out of the store. I have no idea to this day if anyone saw me. No one came running after me. I didn't dare take it out of my pocket on the school bus in case someone might somehow know what I knew, that it was stolen. When I got home, I hid that little wooden windmill in the back of my closet. I lay awake all night long, convinced that at any moment, the Dutch Gardens police would come knocking at our door and take me to jail. The next day, I put the windmill back in my pocket. I went deep into the woods behind our house, and I buried it. I covered up the hole with a big rock I found. I bet I could go back to those same woods today in Pineville, Louisiana, and find that rock and that hole still there. It was several years before I figured out that the Dutch Gardens police, the FBI, and everybody else had finally stopped worrying about that windmill and me who stole it. I think about that crime every time we come to this parable from the Gospel of Luke. My 10-year-old conscience kept bugging me because I had heard many times in church that stealing is a sin. And God is sad when we sin. And so would my mother be if she found out. And I was more worried about my mother, I think, at 10 years old than I was about God. But thou shalt not steal was right there with all the other commandments, the Ten Commandments that included thou shalt not covet and thou shalt not bear false witness. Was I wasn't real sure what that one meant, but I was pretty sure I'd broken it that day. And along with the other two I knew I'd broken, what would come next? Murder? Worshiping other gods? I was worried. But if stealing is a sin, then how could Jesus defend a dishonest manager? He was caught by his boss stealing from the customers. He was overcharging for olive oil and wheat and heaven knows what else. And then when he's caught, he decides to make friends with those whom he had been stealing from by slashing their bills and making it look much better than it really was. Clearly, we have extortion, fraud, and just plain dishonesty. My mother always told me that two wrongs do not make a right. But Jesus makes it sound not only okay, but actually a good thing to do. I don't know that the Virgin Mary would have approved. And I don't know, but that this is just a strange parable. But we do need to remember that this is a parable. And so it's a story that takes what happens in everyday life and gives it a heavenly meaning. Parables are about God, and this one is no different. Jesus is not saying, go out and steal something. Instead, the people who were listening to Jesus that day were living in a world where the, following the rules was the most important thing that you could do. In addition to the Ten Commandments we all know, there were 613 commandments total in the Jewish Scriptures. And... Good Jews followed every rule, no matter what it said. They didn't charge interest. But merchants would get around that rule by jacking up prices. And it was okay for temple priests to have people who didn't pay the temple tax arrested and beaten. But heaven forbid if you cooked food for a stranger on the Sabbath or healed a man who had been blind since birth. In my seminary ethics class at Swanee, we called this deontological ethics. If you follow the rules, you will always be right, no matter what actually happens. 
But Jesus comes saying that in the kingdom of heaven, it's not the results that matter or what you did. It's all about love. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do those two things, you always fulfill the other 611 commandments. If you see a hungry person, feed them. Feed them not because it's the right thing to do or because perhaps someday we will be able to enter, end hunger in the world. Feed them because we love them. Jesus was telling the people that when you act out of love, then you are spreading God's love and the kingdom of heaven will come near. If you've done something wrong, then go and make peace with your neighbor. Love them and ask for their forgiveness just as God has forgiven us. And we forgive because we love our neighbor just as God loves us. And we forgive because God forgives us. And we repent, which means literally turn back to God. And God always loves us and always forgives us, even when we steal a six-inch wooden windmill from a gift shop in Dutch Gardens, Louisiana. Some years later at Christmas, when I was a teenager, my conscience got the best of me again. I was working at a local grocery store. I went to church that summer, that Sunday, and I, took the win and I told the windmill story to our pastor, a very wise and wonderful man. I asked him what I should do. And it would have been easy to forget all about it, for him to say, oh, you don't need to do anything now. That was long ago, in my mind at least. Instead, he told me to write a note to the manager of that gift shop and to put $5 in with it. That should more we th than cover, we thought, the cost of that windmill today. He also suggested that I adopt a child on our Christmas angel tree who needed someone to care. And there was an angel on the tree with the name David on it. And that David was nine years old. I spent a whole day and most of my paycheck shopping. I shopped all the sales I could find, and that paycheck went a long way. Most of the presents were things that nine-year-old David needed, like clothes and school supplies. But there was one present I could not pass up. It was a book I found about Holland and windmills. I hope he liked it. Amen.